Had this saw for years now. Cut everything on it from wood, cheese, salt. I love it. But it is desperately in need of a zero clearance insert, which is this thing right here. As you can see, this insert I think is made of lead and it's all chewed away. But what I want is something that I can cut small parts on without them falling into that hole. And then I have to try to go up in here and see if I can find them in the workings or what. And just in general, zero clearance inserts are a good thing. They're much safer for tools. And I think it'll give us a good chance to do a little casting and molding today. Now you've seen me make a handful of molds on here before. You know, simple shapes things that we're going to end up working later on the lathe. But today what we want to do is we want to make a mold that will end up being our finished shape. The other thing that makes this more complicated is that we want to mold this solid, which means we need to fill that hole. And what I'm going to use for that is just some molding clay. Now, the underside isn't as important. It will never be seen and it doesn't affect the work of it but we do need to make sure that we push back this ridge here. And we've done that and molded it around here so it should slip back in easily enough. What we're gonna be doing today is called a single-sided mold. Enter in my best friend, packing tape. Perfect. And the top of the mold it's just a measuring cup. Now, obviously we don't need it that large, so let's just cut it in half. And we're not gonna to need to fill the whole thing up. All we really need to do is cover our object. Let's spray a little mold release on here first. And we'll set that aside while we uh, mix up our mold material. Today we're gonna to be using Umu, which is basically just silicone rubber. Stir well before using. Somebody out there is freaking out. You're going to make air bubbles in it. I don't care. Ooh, look at that. Doesn't that look like Pepto-Bismol? Isn't that crazy looking? Part A and part B, and we're going to mix some together in equal volumes. You don't need very much. And then we're going to pour in equal amounts of part B. Most silicones, what you want to do is you want to stir until you get uniform color. You can see all the air bubbles here. Ooh, we could degas it. Do we want to do that? I've never done it. So this is my vacuum chamber that I just got. And what I want to try to do is what's called degassing basically pulling all the bubbles out of that silicone. And the truth is, I'm not really sure I know how to do it, but we're gonna try it together. So it's in the chamber. I'm gonna turn on the vacuum pump. We should start pulling the bubbles out of the silicone. big. So what you're supposed to do is wait for it to get close to cresting and then let off the bleed valve. See there, they're breaking before it gets to the top there. I'm not, I'm not touching the valve at this point. That's just the air collapsing in on itself. I haven't touched anything, which means that we're actually doing a good job and getting the bubble down. All right, it's been about five minutes, and you can see the bubbles have almost stopped. I think we did it. I'm going to turn off the vacuum here. So now, why did we do that? What was the point of that? Well, the point is, is that we won't get air pockets in the silicone, which means that we'll get better detail on the casting. Here's a casting I did a while back. See all these little holes? It does affect the end all casting because when you pour, resin can go into those little holes and it will distort your final project. 
All right, let's pour this out before it sets up. And the silicone will level itself out automatically. The bottle says that this needs to cure for six hours and then we'll come back and see how we did. This has had more than enough time to cure, a uh, number of days, because some idiot was out here making bread jewelry instead of working on this. So let's see how we did. Yeah. All right, that works. And then same thing with this. Right. Now there's a little bit of clay in there, but other than that it looks like a pretty good mold and I don't see any air pockets so I guess our degassing worked. Right, let me clean this up real fast and then we can pour some resin. Today we're going to use Total Boat resin. Should work pretty well for this and I don't think we're going to need a whole lot so I'm going to do two pumps from each. Well, we could just do with a regular old clear cast but I'd like to make it interesting so we're going to use some red Red is a pretty traditional color for inserts, that whole don't put your fingers near the blade sort of thing. But ours is going to be really pretty. Woo! Yes! What a cool color. This resin can take around 6 to 12 hours to cure. It's pretty cold in the shop, so I'm going to walk away and let it do its thing. Should have had plenty of time to cure. And there we go. All ready for the bandsaw. Nice. cut really small bits without having to try to retrieve them through the saw. I was a little proud on one side so I went ahead and leveled it on the belt sander real quick and now it fits very nice. But the major benefit of this is our mold which means that the next time this wears out I don't have to go through all this I just have to pour some more resin in there. And I've already made a couple others. Well, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.